Hi, I'm Dr. Ray Drury, and uh, one of the most common questions I get is um, uh, when talking with uh, potential patients is, what exactly is the upper cervical spine? So the upper cervical spine uh, is actually considered the top two bones in the neck, this being the head or the skull, and then the first bone is the is called the atlas, the first cervical vertebra. is called the atlas because the atlas holds up the world, just like the First bone in your neck holds up your world, which is the head, the brain. Then underneath is called the axis. The second cervical bone is called the axis. And the reason it's called the axis is because when you turn your head, the first 46 degrees of motion happens between the atlas and the axis. So it's literally the axis in which the world turns. Now, what's significant about these two bones is, for one, the head sits on top. So anywhere these bones go, the head goes wherever those bones go. And the brain stem comes out of the head down through the top two bones. And then from there down, it becomes spinal cord. Now that's very significant because the brain stem sends messages from the brain to your heart, your liver, your lungs, your kidneys, your arms, your legs, even the messages, the nerves that go up into the head, face, and neck come down here off of the brain stem, then go back up through the skull to give you your vision, uh, your taste, your smell, uh, your hearing, your balance. They control the uh, sensory of the face, the muscles of the face. So all the nerves in the head, face, and neck literally come off of the neck and then go back up into the head. So the upper cervical spine is very, very important. And that's why as upper cervical doctors, this is where we focused almost all of our attention on this area here because it's so vital to the rest of the body. Now, from a standpoint of, of uh, musculoskeletal issues, Wherever these bones go, the head must go wherever those bones take it. Well, you have something within your brain. It's called the writing reflex. And the whole purpose is to make sure the brain's always level or parallel to the ground. So if one of the bones in the top of the neck throw the head off even just a little bit, the brain doesn't like it. So the brain responds by sending messages down, forcing your body now to compensate until the head levels again. So to give you an example, let's say for me, the bone went to my right, your left, and it took the head a little bit that way. Now the brain's off balance, writing reflex kicks in. From there, it might cause me to drop one shoulder, raise one hip. It's going to contort my spine, my skeletal system, till that brain levels again. It has to, because the brain has to be level. Now that creates weaknesses within the spine. Over time, those weaknesses can turn into neck pain or headaches. They can affect the nerves at the disc level that go down the arms to the hands. They can cause upper back pain, lower back pain, even pain down into the legs. Now, when that throws everything out of balance, now your hips are out of balance. Now your legs are, one leg becomes a little shorter than the other. Over time, that can cause your hips to wear down prematurely, cause your knees to wear down prematurely, and even your feet and your ankles. So <clears throat> on top of that, <clears throat> the brain stem we talked about sends all the messages. So if the bone gets out of the line, it can interfere with the message to your heart, your stomach, your kidneys, your arms, your legs. Those, if the brain doesn't get the full message to that part of the body, it doesn't work the way it's intended. As a result, you can have organic problems as well, digestive issues, sleep problems, energy, immune function. All can happen from just something being out of alignment at the top of the neck. Now, you're probably saying, but I don't have any neck pain. Well, the strange thing about the brain stem, the central nervous system, brain, brain stem, spinal cord, doesn't have any pain perception. So you could have had a bone out of the line at the top of your neck for years without having any kind of uh, uh, neck pain or headaches, but it could be interfering with the messages that go to one or multiple parts of your body. It could have thrown your body out of balance, creating weaknesses that now uh, are affecting your knees or your hips or your back. So. It's worthwhile to have this area investigated. Find an upper cervical doctor near you. Let them go in and check you. Within just a few minutes, we can usually determine whether you might have a problem here that could be affecting your health in a negative way. If you do, we'll explain to you what we need to do to try to fix it. If, we, if you do not, hey, at least you ruled that out. And what we will do, we promise we'll try to find another specialist that we believe that can help you. So I hope this explains to you a little bit more about this very vital part of the body here, the upper cervical spine. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can call the office, our office at 704-588-5560, 5560.
Otherwise, I hope you got a little something. If you did, please share it with your friends. Thank you, and I hope you have a great afternoon.